morning church and welcome on this Easter Sunday morning. I'm the Reverend Lynn Menser and I'm the pastor here at St. James and once again we gather for worship in the spirit if not in person here in the sanctuary. I thank Kyle and Jen for making this possible today and I thank you for joining us in worship, for making time to be in worship together on this very special and holy day. I'm greeting you from a doorway today. I'm standing in the doorway because Easter and this unusual time of having to be apart is a doorway moment. It is an in-between time, a time between life as we knew it and life as it is becoming something new. It is an Easter moment. Picture Jesus standing in the doorway of the tomb, looking out on the world and just taking that moment to be in that in-between place himself, knowing that his next step into the world that he has brought new life to will make all the difference in the world, will bring hope and light and new life to God's whole creation. And so we celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. And as we begin every worship with a deep breath, I invite you now to take that deep breath, to breathe in the promise of new life, the mystery of the resurrection and the miracle of God's love for all people. Breathe in, breathe out, welcome the Holy Spirit, and say with me, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is alive, this fruit of our Death met Christ in the grave, the mourners trudging to an empty tomb with loss after loss. Spring is also bright and beautiful, but we'll never forget the despair of this pandemic. True, the pandemic has kindled our fear and reminded us of our mortality. And yet, and yet, on the cross, Jesus overcame despair and fear and even mortality forever. And through the empty tomb, Jesus brings new life today and every day. He is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Hallelujah.
just finishing my butterfly so I can show you what my butterfly looks like. Did you finish your butterfly yet? Aren't they pretty? I was so glad to share these with you this week because butterflies are a sign of new life. They're a sign of Easter. Did you know that? We see butterflies and we think of Jesus and Easter. Why do you think we do? In fact, if you look at our butterflies, you'll see a cross right in the middle, a reminder of Jesus, and it says, Jesus brings new life on the bottom. Butterflies are symbols of Easter for many reasons. Uh, one is that it's a symbol of change. Butterflies don't just come from butterflies, do they? How do we get butterflies? They are first caterpillars, and then they go into a cocoon, and then they come out as a butterfly. It's a miracle of change. And Jesus, too, went through a miracle of change when he was, when he was dead on the cross, and then put in the tomb, and then he was resurrected by God, came back to life again for us. So butterflies remind us of change that is part of God's plan for us. Now, they're also a sign of springtime and new life. And Jesus is a sign of new life, too. What do we see in springtime? What do we notice? Flowers growing and green grass, leaves coming out on the trees, warm weather. Spring feels to me like a hug from God after a long winter. And Jesus feels like a hug from God, too and a reminder that God has given us all the gift of new life. There's one more thing I'm not sure you know yet, that butterflies look very small and delicate, don't they? They flutter around and they look very delicate and dainty, but they're actually very strong. Some butterflies, monarch butterflies, actually can fly for 2,000 miles. They can go from New Hampshire all the way to Mexico and back again. Can you imagine a little butterfly making that long a distance, a journey? And when we think of prayer, we think prayer might be just small and delicate and not powerful, not even important, but it is. And so prayer also is like a butterfly and a reminder of Jesus and Easter and the promise of new life that is strong and powerful and a gift from God. And so this Easter and this springtime, when you see all the signs of new life all around us, remember Jesus and the gift of new life that he brings to all of us every day, not just on Easter. I hope you enjoyed making your butterfly and maybe you can put it up in the window so it will make people going by your house happy when they see it. Let's have a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for butterflies and birds and warmth and new life that we see in springtime, but that always reminds us of the new life you've given us through Jesus. Thank you for your Easter gift, your Easter promise, and all your love for all your people. And we say together, Amen. Today's scripture reading is the story of the resurrection it can be found in Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, or John 20. And today I am reading from the Children's Illustrated Bible. And I'll even show you the pictures. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene arrived at the tomb. She found to her astonishment that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. The body was gone. She ran to Peter and also John, the disciple whom Jesus particularly loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, she told them. The two men hurried to the tomb. John ran ahead and reached it first, but hesitated to go inside. Then Peter arrived and went right into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen and the burial cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, lying on the ground. John joined Peter inside the tomb. They both wondered if Jesus' body had been stolen or if he had risen from the dead. Peter and John returned home, but Mary stayed by the tomb weeping. Suddenly she looked up to see two angels sitting where the body of Jesus had lain. Why are you weeping? they asked her. Because they have taken my Lord away, she cried. 
As she spoke, she turned around and saw a man standing behind her in the shadows. It was Jesus, although at first Mary failed to recognize him. Why are you weeping, she said, or he said. Believing him to be the gardener, she asked him if he knew where the body had been taken. Mary, it is I. My Lord, she cried, her face full of joy. Go now, he told her. Tell my friends that you have seen me and that soon I will be with my Father in heaven. Mary ran back to tell the disciples the news. With my own eyes I have seen the Lord, she said. been thinking about that story all week. We all know that story by heart. We know all the images by heart. Early morning in Jerusalem, Mary in her grief, the empty tomb, the angel, Mary's confusion, the gardener, Jesus calling Mary by name, and then Mary's joy. We know these images, but this week, one particular image has lingered for me, perhaps because of the challenges of dealing with this coronavirus pandemic. It's the image of Jesus standing in the doorway of the tomb, just standing there on that very first Easter morning. 
perhaps pausing to breathe in the fresh air or to look around at the beauty of the world, the blue skies and the olive trees and the dainty carmelite flowers growing by the rocks. To pause and to rest in that holy moment of transition, knowing that his next step would be into a world forever changed by the mystery and the miracle of his resurrection. In that doorway moment, I imagine Jesus hoped that his physical presence would deliver a message to the people that people everywhere were desperate to hear and still are. The message is that God delights in bringing good out of evil, hope out of despair, new life out of death, community out of isolation. In many ways, we're in a doorway moment now. The state has issued a stay-at-home order. All who can are working from home. Children and teens are studying at home. All of us are practicing social distancing. Our doorways have become portals of safety. But there's more. There are also images of hope when we look through them and discover that God is still at it, that God still delights in bringing needed change and new life to God's great and beloved community. One of the things I've heard from many members of our faith community these past few weeks is that we miss each other. We long to see beloved faces to hear familiar voices, to share stories of where we see God raising up new life through our own fear and confusion. So our Easter message today is not a sermon. It's a reminder from members of our church council, our lay leaders, and our church staff members that God's community, gathered by Jesus, guided by the Spirit, and nourished by love, God's community may change, but it will never end. Listen was our focus during Lent. So listen now as each beloved friend shares a message of hope from his or her own doorway looking out on a changed world and seeing signs of new life everywhere. I see a glimpse of Jesus's gift of new life in new opportunities to spend time with my family. I enjoy having my daughters home from college where they're doing their work from home and hearing them laughing as they're teasing each other. We've had wonderful blessings during this time alone one of which is actually the time to listen to each other and to know that music goes on even though the choir has been suspended for the time being. Rails had wonderful opportunities. The other day he was sharing lyrics with Andrew over the phone to new songs and he was able to sit down, play the banjo while Dan played the harmonica from Norway and create beautiful music in our home. During this virus it's good to see the volunteers doing God's work. What I'm seeing right now is the fact that in this time we are being encouraged by God to view the world as community. Um, for me, watching what's going on right now where we have to be separated from each other um, is the problem. We can't be in community and so we are being denied it. But uh, I think some of the good news is that what I see happening is that people striving to help people is going on throughout not only our community and, and, and the country, but also the world. One of the things I've noticed over the last few weeks, and I've only been told to shelter at home for half of the week for Mark, has been towards the end of the day, the neighbors are all coming out. They're conversing. You don't see that every day. 
We've all gotten so busy with our lives, we forgot what everything else is about. So find your neighbors, say hello, smile across the street, wave, and enjoy your time. There's, a, there's my crocus over there, and it was planted like 39 years ago when I first moved here, and there was a whole garden there that had been left by the people who were here. And um, it changed many times over the years. And finally, I'm now at a point where I'm saying, I can't keep up with that anymore. So I went, now it's grass. But that one crocus keeps coming up year after year. No matter what happened to it, it keeps coming up. So that's part of what makes me think that, you know, it's part of the life process. And there's a guy named Joseph Campbell, and he wrote a book called The Power of Myth, which was, um, uh, he was a professor in Harvard and he had a doctorate in studying all kinds of religions and one of the things he says that's consistent in all religions, I don't care when they happened, I don't care if it was years ago, I don't care where it was, um, this one thing of birth, death and rebirth, life, death and rebirth occurs in every, every religion that has ever been, doesn't matter who made it up, it doesn't matter where, what country it was in, that's one of the universal principles. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Some may not find that easy to say. He promised he would never leave us or forsake us. I take great comfort in that. Opportunities abound to love one another, to encourage folks, even those people we don't even know. And we have time to sharpen our prayer skills, to grow our faith and our relationship with our sweet Lord. He never said everything would go all right all the time, but he did say that he will give us the peace that passes all understanding. Praise his holy name. This is my joy that comes every day when we can play and walk and visit our neighbors and say hello to people we don't normally see. Yeah, Blessings to all of you. Back. One way that I've seen new life bursting through in the midst of all this isolation is that with all the stay-at-home orders, we've had uh, so many more people and families walking around the neighborhood with their pets and young kids. We've been able to meet a lot, a lot of new families and have pretty good conversations, even though we're social distances. I just wanted to share with you that in this time of social distancing, I have seen God at work um, with my kids and the time that we're getting to spend together and the time that we're uh, making new connections with each other and, and learning how to navigate a crisis together. I think that that's just been really a huge blessing in the midst of all of this. Um, and I've also seen people out um, on Facebook and social media taking care of each other and watching over each other and asking, you know, do you need anything? Can I pick up anything for you if I'm going out? You know, are, are you hanging in there okay? And just checking in on one another and making sure that everybody is happy and healthy and safe. And I hope that all of you are happy and healthy and safe. And I miss you all. And I can't wait to be back together worshiping again. Happy Easter.
the joys we share as a community of faith here at St. James is to, to be in prayer together, to lift up the names of those we love and care for and place them gently in God's heart, knowing that God already knows and loves even more than we do. And yet when we share our prayers together, there is a blessing that we all feel. This week, I thank you for sending in your prayer joys and concerns so that we might share them together today. And so I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer as we lift up Nicole's mom, uh, who has been struggling with kidney issues for a very long time, and uh, they're actually needing a little bit more attention now. We pray for Doug Wilson, who has um, had some time in the hospital last week um, and has been released and is recovering at home um, and uh, is very glad to be home with his wife and family. We pray for Lucille Fisher, who has received um, news that she will need surgery, uh, but will have to wait several weeks until uh, we've passed the peak of this virus. And as many of us know, the waiting is even harder than dealing with the diagnosis. So prayers for patience and peace of heart for Lucille. We pray for Jen Savoy's friend, Kim, who has also been very sick, but luckily, thankfully not with COVID-19. Fred Huber asked us to be in prayer for his cousin, Bob, who is in the hospital and for his cousin, Carol, um, who is struggling with uh, dementia. But there are joys in the midst of so much need and, and uncertainty, there are joys. There are birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate, new babies being born, and new love springing uh, from among us. And so I lift up Christine Nakamoto's dad, who celebrates 70 years of a happy life and whose family celebrates with him from a safe distance. And I lift up all the signs of compassionate community that we've all seen. Neighbors greeting one another, getting to know one another, at least by, by face across the backyards, or people walking, families walking together, families doing more together. I've even heard of children and youth getting tired of their screen time and wanting to do something fun with their families. God is indeed doing a new thing with us and through us and for us. And so as we pray this day, let us keep that hope alive and remember that we are called to be a blessing to our community. So get out there and wave and walk and connect as best we can as a sign of God's presence with us all. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we pray for those whose names have just been raised in this extended community of faith. We pray for those we love and care for and worry about and want to protect from this virus. And we pray for those who are struggling with it and for those families who have lost loved ones because of it. We pray for those on the front lines, doctors, nurses, EMT workers, rescue workers. We pray for those who are concerned for family and friends and those who are doing all they can to reach out in a safe way to make a difference, to share your love and your light in this present darkness. We celebrate with those who are celebrating, perhaps celebrating in different and new ways this year, even as we celebrate Easter in a different and new way, knowing that you are with us always. And we thank you above all for the gift of Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection we celebrate this day, and whose prayer we pray always whenever we gather. Hear us now as we join our voices in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have been so richly blessed. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we are blessed by our yearning for community and the way God leads us to find new ways to express that and to share that, to share love with one another in light and hope. Many churches, and ours is not exempt, are also struggling during this time, as are individuals and small businesses everywhere. But I ask you if you can uh, keep your pledges, continuing to support the ministries of this church, to either mail them in or to use e-giving or uh, bank to um, arrange for regular payments of your pledge or your gift and tithe, that we might continue to be in ministry here. Uh, administrative functions continue, uh, meetings happen, um, the food pantry remains open, and we do minister as best we can uh, from a safe distance. And so I ask that you please remember that and remember to be faithful in your giving and your thanksgiving for the blessings that we've all received. And so I ask you to join me now in a prayer of gratitude and dedication for the gifts given and received. Generous God, thank you for the priceless gifts of life and eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the inspiration of your abiding spirit. As we ask your blessing on these gifts and tithes, we also ask your blessing on those who live and give generously in order to honor you and enrich the lives of your people. Amen. Our children and youth have a special benediction to share with us this day. Listen as they bring these ancient words to new life and to the glory of God on this Easter morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you. God bless you. And keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Gracious unto you. Gracious unto me. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.